final game in our Road to the Roses special gift to you, Arizona State against Arizona in the duel in the desert. No doubt about it. It's been a season to remember for Jake Plummer and the Arizona State Sun Devils. Their fans tore down the goalposts after beating top-ranked Nebraska. And they tore down the goalposts again after clinching a berth in the Rose Bowl against Cal. Now, with one game remaining, the fourth-ranked Sun Devils are one game away from an undefeated team and a possible shot at a national championship. But the Arizona Wildcats and their fans live for knocking off the Devil Boys. And they've done it the last three years in a row. In fact, they've won 12 of the last 15. Now that's a cool dozen. Arizona quarterback Keith Smith and the people of Tucson have a chance to blow the Sun Devils' rosy outlook to the smithereens. It's the game. Arizona. Arizona State. Live. Coming up next. Tucson, Arizona, where today the 70th renewal of one of college sports' great rivalries takes place. The Arizona State Sun Devils come calling on the Arizona Wildcats. And hello again, everybody. Barry Tompkins once more with my partner, Danny White. And Danny, it seems 10 weeks out of this 11-week season, we're talking about teams being up, teams being prepared, teams being ready to play. We're not talking about that at all today. Don't have to worry about that today, Barry. It's the greatest weekend in college football, in my opinion. I think it's even bigger than January 1st. This is the day when the arch rivals play each other. It becomes much more than just another game, especially to the seniors. To them, this game is personal. I don't think there's any doubt but that Bruce Snyder has already had the discussion with his team. You saw what happened to Ohio State today. This could happen to us. And I'll tell you what, I think Arizona to Arizona State is the same as Michigan was to Ohio State, a real threat. And that's exactly what makes this game so interesting. They really are truly a threat. You throw the records out the window. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is two cities with a great rivalry going. Anything can happen. And two teams with an excellent quarterback. And it's the quarterback that really gets the thing going for both these teams. We had a chance to chat with both the guys that pulled the trigger in this game. It's big. It's a big game. I mean, I, regardless of the fact that we're 10-0, um, everyone on this team wants to be 11-0. And they want to keep us from being 11-0 because then they got to hear about it all through the, the after the season. Maybe they got to watch us go play in the Rose Bowl. And they'd love to see us, you know, when they show us in the Rose Bowl, be the 10-1 uh, Sun Devils. This is our bowl game, kind of. I mean, we, we might be able to go to a bowl game if we win, but this is our bowl game. I mean, this is like, you know, a UCLA-USC game, a Rose Bowl type game. This is this is the bowl game. So, I mean, that's, that's the way we're going to try and treat it. Well, the fact is, with a win, Arizona can go to a bowl game. In fact, their coach, Dick Tobey, thinks that they will. Get you all caught up on everything that's happening in the world of college football. We send you to the Fox Television Center and Randy Sparagi. Welcome inside stage two here at the Fox Television Center. Fanatics Anonymous is now in session. I can't go out anymore dressed up. People always bug me for autographs. I think I'm going to have to break up with my girlfriend. She just doesn't understand why I have to go to these ASU games. Work through that issue. Work through it. I have this compulsion to only dress like you, coach. Hi, my name is Charles, and I'm a Frida fanatic. Hi, Charles. Come on in, big fella. That's, that's OK. We'll, we'll help you through it. Life, life. Let's go to the sidelines, meet the third member of our broadcast crew, as always. He is Andre Aldridge. Andre? All right, thanks a lot, Barry. Well, these two teams are playing for the big game trophy. Get out of my side. But you know what? I can't tell you what the big game trophy is because I couldn't find it. You see, it has to do with the design of the actual trophy. Back in 1979, world-famous artist Ben Goo designed this thing, and it's kind of like an, well, an inverted spaceship. 
It's not that good looking. So neither team cares about this trophy. You see, these Sun Devils and the Wildcats, they aren't part of the arts and crafts crowd. Now, this game here, it's all about pride. And these guys are out there. They're gladiators, and they should be putting on quite a show. Barry, Danny, back up to you guys. Maybe you've got the trophy. Actually, we don't have the trophy. Nobody's got the trophy. But I thought, remember the late Tony Mason, Danny, who was a coach here in the late 70s, has since passed on tragically. But Tony Mason probably had the best line about that trophy. He, said, he looked at it after his team had won it in 1979, and he said, I think they ought to give this to the loser. <laughs> yeah. Dick Tomey, as you see, uh, his record, both here at Arizona and against Arizona State. And he is a guy, incidentally, who is the best, has the best record, best winning record at two different schools here at Arizona and at Hawaii. Bruce Snyder, his record speaking for itself here at Arizona State. He's got all his players now. This is the year he's been waiting for, and absolutely, he and the Sun Devils have made the most of it. Arizona, incidentally, won the toss. They have deferred to the second half. So ASU will get the ball to start things. Matt Payton will kick it off. They'll be kicking the Marlon Barlow and Terry Battle. And we are underway, and it's going to be battle at the one-yard line. To the 10, little gap. Gets back to the 20, still in his feet, to about the 23-yard line, turned in by Kelvin Hunter. Jake Plummer, who has done absolutely everything that could be asked of him, and a few things that weren't asked of him this year, it seems he has made absolutely every big play, every play that he's needed to make, he's made. 20 yep. touchdowns, 7 picks, that's as good as he can do it, Danny. Yeah, that's the point that Bruce Snyder made to us last night. Is, I mean, every time they've needed something, they've needed a play against UCLA, against USC, he's made the play, and, and you can't ask anything more, as you said, Barry, for a, to any quarter. They start with two tight ends, Bush and Kendall, both in the ball game, bring Poole in motion to the near side. Plummer rolling out, wants to put it up, does, throws back for Jackson, incomplete. Kelly Malvo on the coverage for the Cats. Let's take a look at the lineups brought to you by Southwest Airlines. First of all, for the Arizona State Sun Devils, it'll be battle with Polk, the fullback, although he wasn't in there on the first snap. Poole and Jackson to the wideouts and Steve Bush, the tight end. The offensive line, one of the better ones in America. Roquet with Murphy, Robertson, Thompson, and the underrated Rugemeyer. Second down and 10. Pitch to battle this time. Battle got a little gap. 25 to about the 28. David Phipp on the stop. Let's take a look at the Cats and how they line up defensively, brought to you by Southwest. Mike Slocum with Todd Thompson, who until last Wednesday was a backup tight end. Salavea and Van Tuede on the down line. Armand Williams, Chester Burnett, Jimmy Sprott. With Malvo, McAllister, Smith, and Phipp. A very good secondary. Short drop, slant for Poole. Almost intercepted by Malvo. Or make it Phipp. The Devils will have to give it up, and that's exactly what Dick Tomey would have wanted. One of the reasons you start on defense, Barry, in a game like this is emotion has a lot to do with the effectiveness of a defense, whereas it can really disrupt an offense. Lance Anderson will punt it away. Punt it to Rodney Williams, who stands right now at the 22-yard line. Good defensive set for Arizona. Short kick. Hits at the 46 and comes back to about the 42 where it's down by the Sun Devil. So very good field position on the first offensive set for the freshman quarterback, Keith Smith. And uh, when Dick Tomey speaks of Keith Smith, he speaks only in absolutely glowing terms. And he says he's getting better, and that's frightening. Yeah, I see a little twinkle in his eye when he thinks about having this kid for the next three years. At least he hopes he'll have him for the next three years. Extremely talented. Maybe one of the maybe the quickest player in the Pac-10. No, really, as a runner. But in the last six games, he has not thrown an interception, throwing it at a 70% completion rate. Miles and Taylor in the backfield with him. Smith will go up on first down, looking for it all. Going deep to McDaniel, who can't hang on. Perfectly thrown ball. Marcus Sauer defending, but you couldn't throw it any better than that. I'm not sure, Barry, but what that may be the one spot on the field where the sun may have been a factor. It hasn't quite set completely yet. And let's see if this ball doesn't catch it. Just a little slice of the sun right there. 
a very good point, and it is, in fact, the only spot.